Hello everyone and welcome back to Gage Hill Crafts. I'm Sarah and today is going to be part one of two of a series of preview videos for what we have coming up for the rest of the year. Um, I've got some exciting things to tell you about, some new products as well as some new events that we're going to be putting on and um, I'm also going to be discussing the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival which is the next big show that we're going to be uh, vending. Um, so uh, this video is going to be more focused on products and workshops and then next week I'm going to talk a little bit more in depth about the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival um, which is coming up May 4th and 5th and that's held at the Howard County Fairgrounds in West Friendship, Maryland. If you haven't been, it's another uh, very large sheep and wool fiber festival. Um, probably around the sam a similar scale to Rhinebeck, um, but it does have a different feel. Um, it's a little bit more rustic, a little bit more farm focused on the animals um, and the production of wool and uh, other fibers. Um, but there's still a good representation from the arts and crafts side, makers, yarn dyers, and that kind of thing. So there's really something for everybody. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that festival and some of the other makers I'm excited to see there um, next week. But this week I have a whole, uh, a whole host of products to show you. And um, this video is a little bit infomercially. <laughs> um, so if you're not interested in the festival, or you know you're not in the market for yarn or, or other um, kinds of products, you know that's okay. You can skip this video, but um, I'm very excited about some of the new things we have to to offer. And it's not just for knitters; it's for for different crafts as well. So I um, hope you'll stick with me. Okay. So the first item I want to talk about is our skincare line, and these um, two products are lotion cream as well as our lotion bars. Um, these are not new uh, per se. We've been selling these for um, maybe nine months now, um, but they are, we do have some new scents that I've been working on. Um, so I, I use um, essential oils to give some scent to these. And um, I've wanted to, to broaden our offerings um, in different kinds of smells that you can get. Um, so we do always offer an unscented version of everything. I'm particularly sensitive to certain smells, even from natural sources. So I always like to offer unscented and we will always have that option. Um, lavender by itself is very popular. And so, um, that's one we've had for a while and I'm going to continue to offer just the plain lavender. And then we have three new scents, um, that we're going to roll out. So we have had for a while just a plain carrot. Um, it's actually, the oil is derived from the carrot seed. And it has this sort of astringent, almost a grassy um, quality to uh, the fragrance. And some people like it and some people don't. So I thought I'd change it up um, and see what people thought of a carrot and geranium combination. I've actually seen this combination in other skincare products. Um, it seems to be pretty popular. And the geranium uh, has a very floral fragrance, almost like a rose. And so that kind of combines with the grassy, astringent qualities of the carrot and I think mellows it out a little bit. Um, so that might be a nice one to try if you, if you like floral scents. Um, these also do have good topical properties, so it's not just to make the lotion smell nice or to make you smell nice. Um, but the carrot and the geranium both have um, good skincare um, properties, particularly if you have um, acne, um, adult acne. Um, those might that might be a good uh, formula for you to try. Um, the next one is brand new, and it's a combination of rosemary and mint. And um, that one, I would say, it smells more minty than rosemary. But again, the mint can be very bright and kind of um, in your face. And so the rosemary has uh, a smoky, earthy quality that kind of pulls that mint back and makes it um, less like Vicks Vapor Rub or something. You know, it doesn't have that like intense menthol quality. Um, it's just nice and uplifting and fresh smelling and nice and balanced. 
And again, both rosemary and mint are um, also good for the skin when applied topically. Um, so I feel really good about that one. And then the last one is a patchouli orange combination. It's actually patchouli and bergamot oil, um, which is in the citrus family. And this one I really offered um, because my mother loves to wear patchouli. Um, she's a child of the 60s, and that's just a scent that she's always enjoyed. And I know that it can be a divisive kind of a fragrance. People either love it or hate it. Um, but again, I didn't want the patchouli to be overwhelming. So it has that um, kind of spicy, woodsy scent from the patchouli, but then it's balanced out really nicely with the citrus oil. And um, I think this one is really going to be more about the fragrance than about any particular topical qualities. But again, we do get our essential oils from uh, an organic source that um, they lab test every batch that they produce to make sure everything's high quality and is very fresh. Um, so I feel really good about offering these um, to you all. And again, it's all essential oil derived. There's no uh, lab um, scents. These aren't perfumes. They're actually derived from plants. Um, so yeah, so unscented lavender and then carrot geranium, rosemary mint, and patchouli orange. And all five of those options are going to be in both formulas of our skincare products. Um, and I, did, I have talked about these a little bit before, but if you're new or just to refresh you, so the lotion cream really is like a, an everyday moisturizer and you can use this anywhere on your body. I use it on my face every morning after I take a shower. Um, if it's really dry, I might put on a small amount before I go to bed and let it soak in. Um, but you can use it anywhere, elbows, feet, hands, um, you know, body moisturizing, that's really good. And then um, specifically for your hands, I, I developed this one, um, which is our lotion bar, our solid lotion bar. And this has um, the same ingredients as the lab, the cream um, with the addition of some beeswax. So um, our products are based on animal fats, lard and tallow that we get from grass fed animals right here in Vermont. Um, sourced from small farms, and the animals are free range and treated very well. And their fat naturally has a lot of um, beneficial lipids, amino acids, um, omega 3s, all those good uh, skin nutrient um, properties. Um, and it soaks into the skin really well. So you're not going to be left with any kind of like, you might think animal fat is like, oh, I'm going to be greasy or I'm going to have like the sticky residue or something. It's not, it soaks in right away. And it's very skin compatible and you only need a small amount. Um, so like I was saying, the lotion bar has those ingredients plus the addition of beeswax. And um, so this one has a little more staying power and it's really nice to put it on right before you start knitting or working on a project, whether you're a woodworker, a potter. Um, if you work with your hands a lot, especially if you have to either wash them a lot or you have some kind of a braiding action going on while you're working, um, this is really nice and can help protect your skin um, and keep it moisturized. So, and this is a, you know, it's a lightweight um, container. Um, our creams come in a glass jar because I'm trying to avoid plastic as much as possible. So this jar is a little heavy to tote around, um, but this one is just a paper tube. Um, and so it's nice and lightweight, compact, throw it in your bag. Um, you could even keep it in your pocket and carry it with you. So those are our skincare products, um, and as more and more of you have tried them and given me positive feedback, um, I'm feeling better and better about offering this because I think it really can be um, beneficial. I've seen folks um, with chronic acne um, see some improvement. Um, my mother and I both have rosacea on our faces, and that has really cleared up. It's kind of a red, splashy, almost looks like a rash when it's um, broken out. Um, but that's really cleared up for both of us. And so, although everyone's skin is different, um, and everyone's, you know, personal chemistry is different, um, we have seen these products really work on a lot of different skin types. So if you're looking for something to help with a skin problem, let me know. Um, feel free to contact us by email, and uh, I'll be happy to work with you. Um, or you can just give them a try. 
So that's skincare. Um, following on from that, I wanted to talk about knitting kits. Um, and you'll see why in just a second. So there's two knitting kits that we offer, or that we're going to offer at Maryland specifically. Um, the first one is for a double knit cowl. And this one I've talked about on the program before. Uh, this is the kit. So it comes with two colors of yarn. Um, you can't see it, but there's a pattern in there. And then it also comes with your choice of scent of the solid lotion bar. And the pattern is for a double knit cowl. It can either be a single height, and you can get two of these out of one kit, or you can do the double height cowl, which is this one. And because it's double knit, it's completely reversible. So you can wear it with the bright color side on the outside or the brown on the outside. So it's great, it's versatile, it's got a lot of different looks. You can wear it as a cowl. Um, you can also wear it as a headband. Um, fits nicely around on a sort of an average adult size head. Um, and it comes in these three colors. So it comes in the green, uh, which we call fern. It comes in this sort of tan taupe color. I'll call it a taupe more than a tan. It's not, it doesn't really have a, like a yellow, uh, cast to it. It's just a very, very soft gray brown. And that's what it looks like on the other side. And then if you like a little bit more color, it also comes in this orange, which we're calling jewelweed. Um, Cause the jewelweed plant is a natural dye plant that grows on our farm that we use. So this is not dyed with jewelweed, but it resembles that kind of color. So those are the three options for that. And again, you get the, all the yarn, the pattern, um, and a lotion bar. Uh, and you get to pick which scent you would like. Now these kits are currently available on the website. They've been available for a few months. So if you're not coming to the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival, you can feel free to grab one online in our shop, uh, which is shop.ghocrafts.com. Um, but if you are coming to the festival, you can, you know, um, try these on if you want, or just, you know, get a feel for them. I can talk to you about double knitting if you're not familiar with that technique. Uh, if you can knit and purl, you can double knit. It's not that hard. Um, and yeah, you can also pick out which scent you want and take home a little gift. And, and these kits, um, both of the kits I'm going to talk about today, are really nice to um, also give as a gift. So whether or not you're a knitter, if you know a knitter and you're not really sure what to get them, this is a nice standalone, you know, here's the project, here's the whole thing in a box. Um, and you don't have to worry about, did I buy enough yarn? Did I buy the right yarn? Or any of those kind of questions. Now I mentioned I have a second kit, and this one is a collaboration with Tammy White of Wing and a Prayer Farm. Um, she's down in the southern part of the state, down in Shaftesbury, and she um, has a Vermont sock yarn. So she uses the fleeces from her fiber flock and sends them to a local mill. They're blended with a little bit of nylon for stability and strength, and she has the Vermont sock yarn, and this is the Shaftesbury sock pattern that I came up with um, to show off her beautiful hand dyed yarn. Um, now you'll notice the color on these, and I have a few other colorways as well. I have a blue, um, but all of her colors are hand dyed by her using natural plant materials. Um, and many of these, if not all of them, are actually grown on her farm. So she grows um, sunflowers, she grows indigo, weld, um, all different kinds of plants, and dyes gorgeous colors. Um, you can see the, the tonal variation. This is going to be an overdye probably with, uh, what is this, light onion skin and indigo um, to make this color combination of green and, green and yellow, and there's some teal in here too, which is my favorite color. So um, each kit has a skein of sock yarn. So again, they come in a nice little gift box. And each kit comes with the skein of yarn. Again, my pattern for the Shaftesbury socks. And the socks come in a, a pretty big range of sizes. Um, they don't come in children's sizes, but they range from a women's 
uh, US shoe size 6 to um, a men's 12. So hopefully they will fit uh, someone, fit you or fit the person that you're knitting for. You should be able to find a good size in there. Um, and then these kits also come with a key fob that's branded with the Wing in a Prayer Farm logo. And this has the um, Kitchener stitch uh, instructions reminder on the back because you have to use the Kitchener stitch to sew the toe closed when you get to the end of the sock. These are knit um, top down. Um, if you prefer to knit your socks toe up and you know how to do that, um, I, it would be very easy to just flip the stitch uh, pattern around and, and knit them that way. So if you're an experienced sock knitter, um, don't be put off by my top-down instructions if you like to do toe-up. Um, and I'd be happy to help you with that too. You could just message me. Um, but it's a pretty easy pattern. It's just a slip stitch pattern, but I think it shows off the yarn really well. Um, it's a nice cushiony fabric. Um, and, you know, it's, it's meant to be a unisex, um, just sort of all over texture. So it appeals to a broad audience. And like I said, it comes in a very wide range of sizes. This is the smallest size for this model, um, my plastic foot. But uh, yeah, pretty easy to knit in a range of sizes. And so, and then this kit also comes with your choice of the lotion cream. So the idea is, you know, we call it the knitter, knitter's pedicure kit. So knit yourself a pair of socks, get some nice cream to put on your, your dry feet. I know after a long winter like the one we've had, a lot of people need a little home uh, pedicure TLC to get their feet back ready for sandal season. Um, so you can do that. So those are our two kits. Again, they make great gifts. Um, and each one comes with a, with a product as well. Um, while we're talking about kind of yarn and kits and things, I wanted to show you some new yarn that we have available. And this yarn is 100% Romney. It's a worsted weight yarn. And it comes, the wool comes from my friend Rebecca Began's farm. Um, and I interviewed Rebecca last week. So if you haven't seen that episode, I will link to it um, down below this video. Um, but Rebecca's an experienced shepherd. She's been shepherding for about 30 years now. And she raises old style Romneys um, on the farm where she works. And their yarn is beautiful, lustrous. It's, um, it's a long wool yarn and that can have a reputation for being a bit um, scratchy. But her yarn, the way that she's bred those sheep and then the way that the mill has spun this yarn for us, it's very smooth and it's got a really nice hand to it. Um, so this is the yarn. Um, my mother and I actually dye it ourselves here at the farm. And we use an eco-friendly dye called Greener Shades, which does not have any heavy metals in it. So um, I have a nice palette of spring colors. This is a nice spring green. And yeah, we just have a great time um, coming up with different colors and getting the dye pots out. We've been having an awesome time with that. And so I'm looking forward to sharing this with you. Um, each skein is 100 grams and 200 yards. So it's a pretty kind of standard worsted weight yarn. Um, like I said, a three ply, so it has great stitch definition. And we even found on some pretty bright colors as well. This is a bright chartreuse. Um, but you know, you could do color work with this. You could pair that up. Um, you could even pair that up. Chartreuse and gray is a kind of a popular color combination these days. So, and then we do have some dark colors as well. This is more of a dark burgundy red. So, and those aren't all the colors. I just kind of picked a representative selection, but I have a few other shades of blue. I've got another darker shade of green. I've got some um, more reds. So come on by and check them out. Um, I don't know if I'll put these online or not. I might, I might see if a local yarn shop is going to carry them for me. Um, just because we haven't done a lot of online sales with yarn in the past. Um, but we will definitely have all of these at the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival, so you can get these there. Um, so that's all for kind of fiber, yarn, and kits. And then the next thing I wanted to talk about was travel bags. And this is another brand new product I'm very excited about. Um, 
I'm very, I have a lot of knitting bags and I've purchased different ones over the years. And I find personally that I do not like zippers. And a lot of the handmade bags you see these days do have zippers. Um, now, this is completely a personal choice, okay? I'm not saying anything bad about those bag makers or their products um, because, you know, the, the people that I could name that make zipper bags, they make them super high quality. Um, but I wanted something else. And I found this, a bag like this, that was really intended as like a makeup kit um, or something that you just put small items like a, uh, you know, the cord, the charger for your phone or something in there. Um, but I thought they would make an excellent travel uh, knitting and crochet bag. So I've been working with a local sewist. And again, I already interviewed her. Um, her name's Pauline, and I'll link to her interview as well. Um, and she's been really great because I'm not a professional sewist, and I don't know all the terminology and kind of anatomy of sewing techniques. Um, she's been really great in helping me develop this design. And so this was a prototype. Um, it's a little bit too small. So the, the final sizes um, are going to be one that's a bit bigger than this um, for a single skein of like sock yarn or maybe working on a hat, a small project. And they're really meant as travel bags. And so they have this mechanism built in where they close on their own. Um, and that means no zipper. Um, now you can, this is a sock in progress, you can take your knitting out and you can thread your working yarn into the corner of the bag and it will, it will come out there and not catch. So you can knit straight from the bag. Um, but if you commute, um, especially if you commute on a train or subway, um, I thought this was a really great way because you can be sitting working and then, you know, your stop is called and you don't have a bag to like try to close up or zip up real quick or whatever, prevent your stuff from falling out. This bag's going to stay closed all the time until you open it. Um, so if you like to take your knitting with you or take a small project with you, car knitting, um, some people just keep it, you know, a project with them. Um, this is great. You can keep this in a larger bag, like a backpack or a purse. And that way, you know, your knitting's contained, your yarn's not going to get all tangled up with all of your other items, um, but then you can just pull this out and work on your project. Um, every bag, you see the little D-ring here, every bag is going to have a D-ring with a removable strap. And for the color choices, I decided to keep it gender neutral again, so I'm not going to have any floral prints. Um, again, this was just a prototype. Um, but the colors, I picked a variety of solid colors. Um, some are very um, sort of neutral, more conservative, like I think there's a navy and a dark tan. And then there's a couple of brighter colors as well. Um, but they're all solids in this first batch. And we're going to have the small size for, say, socks or a hat. And then we're going to have a medium size, and that's going to be for, say, two or three balls of yarn. So if you're working on a small color work project like a hat or a cowl, um, or, you know, a two or three color shawl, or scarf, um, or something like a baby sweater, um, kind of a mid-size project that would fit in the medium size. So I'm really looking forward to um, debuting these bags at Maryland. Um, I'm only going to have, I think, 18 of the mediums and maybe about 35 or so of the smalls. So there's not going to be a huge number. I kind of wanted to see you know, what, what people thought of them, what you all thought of them. Um, but if they're a hit and people like them, then we'll make more and, uh, and might even be able to offer them in a larger size. Um, my idea for this really is kind of the way that I knit, which is I like to take a small project with me everywhere. And so I don't know that we'll do like a huge sweater size bag because to me that's kind of a different approach to a knitting bag. Um, I really want a smaller, to offer smaller sizes for those small travel projects. So that's where we're starting with this. Um, but like I said, I'm really excited. You know, these bags are, um, they're going to be made with high quality organic cotton, 100% organic cotton, both for the outside, um, which is like a light twill, and the inside lining, 
um, which is a high quality um, sort of a quilter quilters cotton grade um, fabric and uh, although this one has a, a nylon ribbon on it um, I ordered organic cotton uh, ribbon tape as well so the entire thing is going to be made out of organic materials and um, high quality made in the US hardware um, so yeah I'm, I'm really excited to, to offer this and to offer you know a quality product that's sewn by an expert sewist right here in Vermont and uh, and hopefully you guys will agree and enjoy them um, so that was project bags um, like I said really really excited about these and I hope you guys will enjoy them um, and the next product we're gonna have are um, another one that just makes a nice gift and there are hand poured beeswax candles um, now my mother Nancy is in charge of the candle department here at Gate Hill Crafts so she's been pouring these for me they're a really beautiful um, golden color and they have such a strong smell of honey um, I can't get over I mean this one has been sitting in a box I think she gave me a little set for Christmas um, but this is, has been sitting in the box for several months and it still absolutely smells like you're sticking your head in a beehive. It's just amazing. Um, and they, of course, make your house smell like honey when you burn them. And they're very long lasting and um, yeah, they give off a lovely soft light. And, you know, my mother is really a stickler for how she pours these. And so you get a candle that completely burns and you use every little drop of wax. So they're very efficient. Um, and then you can just recycle the little aluminum case. Um, I absolutely love them and they make a great gift. Um, so again, if you're coming to the festival, maybe you are a yarny um, and you're shopping for your own, you know, crochet or knitting or weaving projects um, or spinning, you know, fiber. So you, you might be buying stuff for yourself but maybe you need a little gift for the person who's watching your pets or, you know, Mother's Day is coming up, things like that. These make a really nice gift. Um, we're going to be selling the tea lights in a little set in a nice gift box. And then we're also going to be offering tapers as well. I don't have any in front of me, but uh, my mom's pouring six inch tapers, which again will last for several hours and um, same high quality beeswax that we get uh, right from a beekeeper here in Vermont and we filter the wax ourselves so another great gift idea um, I'm gonna have to remind myself what's on my list oh yes of course <laughs> so the reason we started um, vending originally at Maryland Sheep and Wool um, was to sell organic sheepskins so I've mentioned Vermont natural sheepskins on the channel a few times um, but just as a reminder for those who are new uh, Rick and I run the only organic tannery for sheep and goat skins in North America, um, at least that I, I know of. Um, now there are some people who are doing uh, a different kind of tanning out of their homes, um, kind of a homesteading approach to tanning, which is also organic, um, but we're the only sort of commercial operation at this point. So we actually tan for other farmers. They send us their skins, we tan them and bank sheepskin rugs out of them and then send them back. And we do a small sideline of retail business on our own at vermontnaturalsheepskins.com. Um, you can get our sheepskins there on a seasonal basis, but we will also have a selection of them at the booth at Maryland. And, you know, you may be thinking, well, it's not winter, you know, why would I want a sheepskin? Um, they're really great year round, especially um, for folks who might need extra support or might have trouble uh, regulating their own temperature. Um, wool will naturally wick away sweat and moisture from your body and it will help your body regulate its temperature. So you're not going to get too hot sitting on one in the summer. Um, and they're nice, you know, in the car, um, especially if your driver's seat is, you know, beat up or if it doesn't provide a lot of support. You can put a sheepskin on there and it will um, keep you cool and pre prevent you from cooking on that like plastic upholstery. Um, they're also great for babies year round for you know in the crib or nap time or even play time. Um, they make a really nice gift for Mother's Day, uh, wedding parties or engagement parties, um, you know baby showers like I said. 
So different occasions um, that you might have to celebrate over the spring and summer. If you have, if you want a special gift to give someone, um, an organic sheepskin is a really great gift to give. And so we'll have those at Maryland so you can come pet them uh, and sit on them and take them for a test drive yourself. Um, so that's, that's it for new products and products we'll have for Maryland. Um, some of these will make it onto the website after the show. So um, I'm going to be listing all of the flavors, if you will, or scents for the lotion products. Those will be on the website. Like I said, the kits for the um, cowls are up now. So if you wanted to um, pick up a nice, you know, challenge yourself and learn a new skill, learn to do double knitting this year on a small project. That's a fun one. Um, the sock kits, I'm only going to have 10 of these uh, Knitter's Pedicure sock kits. So I'm expecting they'll sell at the show. But um, uh, Tammy at Wing and a Prayer Farm should have some more um, sock kits later this year. So if you're not able to get one now, you can check her Etsy shop. Um, but if you're not able to pick one now, we'll work out um, our next release and I'll let you know when they'll, there will be more available um, and will probably be available from her. Um, the beeswax candles, <laughs> my mom is retired and she has told me that she's not available to make these for me year round. So I'll have a set amount at the show. Um, and if I have leftovers, I might just save them for the next few shows that we're doing in person um, rather than putting them online and just immediately selling out. So definitely come by our booth at Maryland. If you're interested in beeswax candles, um, come there. I would say come there Saturday, you know, before lunchtime probably um, because we're not going to have a huge number, um, but we'll bring all that we have. And um, we'll also have them at the New Jersey um, Sheep and Wool Festival. I think I think it's officially called the Garden State Fiber Fest. Um, that's going to be the first weekend in September, and that's a new event for us this year. So I'm really looking forward to vending there. Um, we've got some friends in the area, and uh, Anne Choi, who's another shepherd, um, has graciously um, invited us to stay with her. So thank you, Anne. Um, and yeah, that will be a fun. That's a smaller scale festival. And so if you, if you don't like going to these big, um, big shows like Rhinebeck or Maryland, um, Garden State would be one to check out. And uh, it's a little bit less overwhelming um, just because of the size. Um, and then, of course, we'll have the Vermont Sheep and Wool Festival, and that's the first weekend in October. And that's at the Tunbridge Fairgrounds here in central Vermont. And that is also a nice... Um, a smaller scale show, uh, right around 5,000 people attend that one. And we'll be in our usual spot in the pavilion. We'll have all of these um, products. We we'll might not have the sock kits because Tammy actually vends at that same show and she, her booth is very close to ours, but I can, I can point you to her booth for that. Um, but we will probably have more of the candles and more of the project bags um, at that show. And I see the dog has decided to come on camera. Come here, Leo. You come down and say hi to everybody. He's looking at squirrels out the window. Um, it's springtime, by the way. I'm so excited um, to be able to wear a t-shirt inside and not freeze to death. <laughs> um, yeah, so what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, Garden State and then Vermont Sheep and Wool Festival. So those are the other two um, kind of vending opportunities that we'll have, and we hope to see you there. Um, otherwise, for events... We do have a new events page on the Gage Hill Crafts website. Um, so if you go to the home page, you can click on events and we'll have those three festivals listed with the details. So you can find out more information and get those on your calendar. I'm also really, really pleased to announce that we are finally able to offer our first series of workshops. Um, and the first one is going to be a dye class um, on acid dyes uh, techniques and surface treatments. So we'll be using the same greener shades dyes um, that I used to, to dye yarn for us. Um, and they're very easy to use acid dye. They come in a, a wide range of colors. And then we also have um, a color card where you can make up your own colors. So we'll be exploring um, a range of techniques from cattle dyeing, um, dyeing on sock flanks. We'll talk about creating self-striping yarn 
and we'll probably do one uh, kind of trendy technique, like maybe speckles or something, um, depending on the, what the class wants to do. Um, now this class is going to be on June, Saturday, June 29th. It's probably going to be the better part of a full day. Um, so if you wanted to travel from out of the area, let us know and we can uh, find you. There's some very inexpensive uh, B&Bs in the area that are nice, um, but they're not pricey. Um, you have to be kind of careful in Vermont because when you go to places like Stowe or Woodstock or some of the more touristy areas, you can easily pay three or four hundred dollars a night for a place to stay, um, even in an Airbnb. Um, but around where we are, it's not so touristy. There's no huge attractions here, and so um, you can stay more conveniently and and stay for less a lot less money. So just to just to let you know, if you're interested in any of the programs I'm going to mention, um, get in touch with us, and I can point you uh, to good lodging and good food and all that. Um, if you're local, of course, you can just drive down for the day. So we're located in central Vermont, um, near exit 3 off of I-89, if you're looking at a map. Um, pretty easy to get to. And we're going to have these dye classes at the farm. Um, so you'll be able to meet both of us. My mom's going to be helping out. And we're going to limit the class size to five total. And I think I have two spots filled in each class already. So we really only have room for three more people. Um, so if you're interested, Again, I will link to this, um, but make sure you go to gagehillcrafts.com, click on events, and uh, you know check that out. And then if you're interested, go ahead and register, um, because I expect both of these workshops to fill up. So the second dye class is going to be a natural dye-focused workshop, and that's going to be on Saturday, July 27th. Um, also here at the farm, also an all-day workshop. And we're going to be harvesting plants from around the farmstead and dyeing with them. I might also introduce some extract dyes, um, depending on what's in bloom and what we can get our hands on. If we can't find enough different colors to harvest, then we might use some extracts as well. But we're going to be using things like goldenrod, jewelweed, um, tree bark, and, you know, maybe some, some other items um, that we can find around here, possibly some mushrooms um, if, I can, if we can harvest enough. And uh, we're gonna talk about mordanting your yarn, preparing it, and then we're also going to look at different um, modifiers or pH shifting, um, things that you can do to change the shade or the tone of those natural dyes. And we'll talk about responsible harvesting um, and yeah, that kind of thing. So um, I think natural dyeing has this reputation of being very eco-friendly and wonderful, and it can be that, but it can also be environmentally harmful if you over-harvest rare plants or, you know, disturb natural habitat too much um, or things like that. So you do have to be careful. Um, you also have to be careful how you dispose of your dye water. Um, but anyway, Natural Dye Class, July 27th. Again, I will link to that. And again, it's going to be a small group because I want everyone to be really, you know, able to have as much hands-on experience as possible. Um, in both of these classes, you're going to go away with several skeins of yarn, finished yarn that you've made. And, you know, that will be enough to either knit several pairs of socks or you could combine your yarns and make a larger item like a, you know, a color work sweater or a larger shawl or something like that. Um, and then the other class that we're going to be teaching, um, and I know some of you, like us, you know, you have multiple hobbies, um, so I wanted to, to mention this as well, which is our homebrew class. Um, now this is going to be taught by our friend Scott Russell, the homebrew guru. He has many years experience teaching homebrew classes, and he's agreed to do this for us, so I'm really excited about it. Um, that's going to be a two-part class. So I would imagine it's going to be more appealing for those of you who live um, in or near Vermont or can make it up here um, because the first part of the class we're going to be um, creating the beer and in, then in a few weeks um, after that we're going to have to wait for the beer to ferment out and then we'll be bottling the beer and you'll actually be able to take some of that beer home with you. So that's why we have to have it in two parts um, kind of spread over a few weeks. Um, but yeah, we're going to be, be doing that. We'll be brewing an American pale ale, and Scott's going to be working on a recipe 
um, for the class. You'll get a copy of the recipe. Um, like I said, you'll get uh, samples of that beer to take home. And we're also going to be doing some uh, style tasting during the class so you can get um, some more information about what, what American pale ales are um, and how they compare to similar styles like IPAs or New England IPAs. Um, and I'm really looking forward to that. This is an all grain class. So if you've already started down the homebrew path, but maybe you've only worked from extract kits or partial, uh, what's called partial mash, um, you'll be able to get your hands on an all grain process. Um, we'll talk about all the equipment that you need to do that and um, really look at how, you know, how the professionals brew beer and how to get, um, a professional quality beer out of your um, own homebrew kitchen setup. So I, I'm really looking forward to this one myself and I hope you are too. Um, that class is going to be a little bit bigger. We can take up to eight people for that one and we don't have any spots filled right now. So um, if you did want to take it or if you may, maybe you want to come with a friend or something like that, um, just go to the the website for that, um, which will have more information, again, Gage Hill Crafts events page, and uh, click on the homebrew class. You can find out the dates, um, the cost, and all of that, and go ahead and register. And again, the, the first date for that is July 13th, which is also a Saturday. So I'm really excited about all these new products, events, um, everything that's going on here, and you know, we can we'll continue to offer. Uh, new things for you. If you have ideas for products or variations on anything I've showed you or fiber arts classes or homebrew classes, um, feel free to contact us um, by email info at Gage Hill Crafts or you can just leave a comment below this video and let us know. We'd love to hear from you. We want to um, cater to your needs and your interests. So if you you know, want a good excuse to come up to Vermont and check us out, let us know what kind of class you'd like to take or what kind of uh, tour or experience you'd like to, to have to do that. Um, we'd like to work with you. Thanks again for joining me. And again, tune in next week. I will have more in depth about the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival event. I'm going to um, talk about a new pattern that I have coming out uh, in conjunction with that and talk about some of the other vendors um, that I can recommend that you go check out if you are able to attend that. Um, there's some great, great people and I want to spotlight them and share the love. So thanks again for joining us and tune in next week. Cheers. <laughs>